In this video, we're going to learn about the first law of thermodynamics, and we'll also learn about how heat transfers during chemical reactions. First, we're going to learn about the energy in chemical reactions, then we'll learn what the first law of thermodynamics is, and then we're going to learn how heat is transferred during chemical reactions, and the difference between endothermic and exothermic, and then finally, we'll learn how to measure heat and the units we use to measure heat. Let's start by defining energy. And actually, the word energy is a really difficult word to give a specific definition because there's so many different types of energy. We have wind energy, solar energy, we have electrical energy, we have uh, kinetic energy and potential energy. There's so many different kinds. One thing that we do know with all systems is that uh, any sort of system or object wants to be at a lower state of energy. So, for example, this car is right up on a hill. And it has a high amount of gravitational potential energy because it's high up. If I were to kind of move it over to the edge, it would naturally just go down the hill and get to a lower energy state. When it comes to chemical reactions, we're going to define energy as a capacity to do work or transfer heat. Work, in really simple terms, is energy that makes things move. And so if you were to throw a baseball, that would be doing work because you're making the baseball move. And heat is the energy that causes temperature to rise. All right, let's get to the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So therefore, if energy is lost during a chemical reaction, it has to go somewhere that we can observe and measure. To understand this law as it relates to chemical reactions, we're going to think of chemical reactions as, they, as if they're occurring inside of a box. So I have this chemical reaction here, and this box we're going to call the system. And then everything outside of this box is going to be called the surroundings. And this is all the space, basically, that's surrounding the system. So the system is our chemical reaction, and if the chemical reaction were to require energy, it would have to gain that energy from the surroundings. So this energy here would just come in here to be able to power that chemical reaction. And if the chemical reaction gave off energy, uh, it would have to move out into the surroundings. And again, it's something that we have to be able to measure. So what is this energy that we're talking about? Well, in chemical reactions, that energy is called chemical potential energy. And it's the energy that's stored up in the bonds between atoms. It's kind of like the bonds are loaded springs. And as the bonds are broken and reformed, there's going to be some sort of energy that is released. And so if the old bonds had less energy than the new bonds, uh, we would need to gain some energy from the surroundings. So here's what I mean by that. Here's a simple chemical reaction. Uh, that we can look at as an example. This is H2 gas, hydrogen gas, reacting with oxygen gas to produce water. And so I have this reaction here represented in our system, and these white circles represent the hydrogen atoms, and these uh, red circles here represent the oxygen atoms. So we're just going to connect them so we can see those different molecules. This is the beginning part. So I have these two molecules of H2 and one O2. Now there's a certain amount of chemical potential energy that's stored up within those bonds that are between these different atoms. Let's just say that the total potential, chemical potential energy within these bonds is at 200 kilojoules. So we'll just say that's the energy we have stored up within these three bonds. Now as the reaction proceeds, these bonds are going to have to break and then reform to make water. So we'll have these new bonds that are forming we get those two new water molecules. And we can measure the potential energy stored up within these new bonds. And let's just say that it came out to a total of 100 kilojoules for all of those bonds. What we can do is we can calculate the difference in energy between the initial uh, amount of energy stored up to the new amount of energy stored up. So to calculate this, we would calculate the difference this is that delta symbol right here. This triangle means difference in energy. We take the final energy and subtract from that the initial energy. So we get a difference of negative 100 kilojoules. And so since the final energy is lower than the initial energy, some of the energy would have had to been released out of the system into the surroundings. So if the difference in energy is negative, that means energy was transferred from the system to the surroundings. And if the energy was positive, that means energy was taken from the surroundings and goes to the system. It's just like going to the ATM. Uh, if you were going to go and withdraw money from your bank accounts, your bank account would be the system, and if you took money out, that would be a negative uh, impact on your bank account. 
So the energy that's transferred during a chemical reaction can be measured by the heat that is transferred between the system and the surroundings. So we don't really have to worry about the work part of the energy definition. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more in a later video when we talk about enthalpy. So if energy, or in other words heat, is transferred out of the system, the exchange would be negative, which we saw that in the previous example, and we call this exothermic. And so the exo part of this word is referring to exit, and the thermic is the heat, so heat is exiting the system. You may have used hand warmers before, and hand warmers ha has a chemical reaction that's going to occur when you introduce the chemicals inside of this package to air. And when they react with each other, they give off energy. In other words, they give off heat, and we call that exothermic. On the flip side of that, we have endothermic, and endothermic means that heat is going to go into the system. So the endo part here is into and the thermic is heat. And you may have seen this reaction take place whenever you've used an instant ice pack. So instant ice packs, you would you would break this uh, contents inside of it by just you know crushing the pack and then two chemicals would mix and they would require heat from the system. And so if you were to put that on this your skin, it would start drawing heat from your skin in order for that reaction to occur, making it feel cold. So finally, how do we measure heat? Well, first off, the unit we use to symbolize heat is the letter Q, a lowercase q. And why do we use a lowercase q? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't really know the answer to that. Um, but the SI unit for heat is going to be the joule. And that's the same unit that we use for energy. So heat and energy are the same thing. But we also commonly use the calorie. So since we have two different units that we use commonly, we're going to have to be able to convert between the two. So here's the conversion. One joule is the same thing as 0.239 calories, and one calorie is the same thing as 4.184 joules. So for example, if I knew that a chemical reaction uh, released 45.6 joules of energy, how many calories would that be? Well, we can create ourselves a little conversion factor using... Uh, this relationship here. So we could take that 45.6 joules and we can multiply that by a conversion factor that's going to give us calories and get rid of the joules. It doesn't matter which one of these I choose to work with. I think I'll go with this one right here and I'll just put a one joule on the bottom and that for every one joule we're gonna have 0.239 calories and so this would be 10.9 calories. So that would be the same thing as 45.6 joules. So did you learn everything in this video? If you did, then you learned that energy is the capacity to do work or transfer heat. And we generally ignore the work part and just say energy is the transfer of heat. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. And heat that leaves the system goes to the surroundings. And the heat that goes into the system is going to come from the surroundings. And then we learn that heat is gained by the system. We say it's going to be endothermic. And then we say if heat is lost by the system, it's exothermic. And then we usually use joules and calories to measure heat. And one calorie is the same thing as 4.184 joules.